Welcome back. Many freshmen began this school year in cramped dorm rooms, with some forced to live three or four to a room originally designed to house only two people. While housing overcapacity continues to be an issue, we sent USF TV's investigative reporter Patrice Hara to see if the problem has improved. As we close another semester here at the University of San Francisco, each department has undergone its initial modifications and changes to adapt to a higher influx of new students. One department that has been subject to experiencing much of the difficulties is the Office of Residence Life. This year, the University of San Francisco was responsible for housing approximately 2,227 students with only 2,129 spaces available. Exceeding space capacity has not been an uncommon problem in the university's recent history. However, for the first time, the Office of Residence Life has had to house an additional 90 students, more than double the student surplus of the past. According to Ray Corraligo, Director of Office of Residence Life, We had to house um, the additional 92 students and make really creative, best use of the facilities that we had. That means that the students who completed their housing applications later than the stated deadline uh, were subject to being housed in lounges or in triple room assignments. Students were placed in lounges that were shared by up to five people. Many of these students in converted lounges were expected to share desks, closets, and required to loft their beds. In some cases, three students were placed in traditional double rooms that kept privacy to a minimum. In the triple rooms, we're a little bit more concerned because it was normally only hold two people, and you know they were more concerned because we did we do have to bunk the um, two of the beds to make enough room for all the students. But you know we we've worked with them um, and we've spoken to their parents. Uh, and, and have tried to alleviate some of their concerns as much as possible. Many students expressed complaints regarding the amount of discomfort they were experiencing. Among other issues, students were distressed by the lack of personal space, especially in comparison to their peers in double occupancy rooms. According to Allie Forth, a psychology major living in Gilson Hall. Well, I flew here, so I had to like downsize everything because of flying, but then I also downsized because I didn't know what um, exactly I needed to bring like I didn't think there was gonna be a closet at all so I left a lot of clothes and so we didn't have a lot of like information as to what um, we could fit. Other issues that were of deeper concerns were in regards to the emotional instability of transitioning into college. Such problems were brought to the attention of resident hall advisors whose floors in Phelan Hall, a typically second-year resident hall, were housing more new students than ever before. Ashley Gonzalez, resident advisor of the Erasmus Living and Learning community in Phelan, who had freshmen on her floor, spoke of her role in helping to ease the concerns of these displaced students. Uh, we had over 94 to 96 new freshmen coming in, which is the highest number of freshmen we've ever had in Phelan. So um, this took a, a big hit on Phelan because a lot of sophomores and freshmen didn't know how to deal with it. Um, a lot of freshmen, a lot of freshmen felt that um, they were disconnected from their class. While this problem may continue due to the growing popularity of USF we can expect a change in the expectancy of housing availability, according to Kuralico. Um, what I think will be the more immediate effect is um, we in Residence Life just may not be able to house students who are no longer required to live on campus. Uh, and that means traditional aged juniors and seniors w will really start losing a lot of those spaces because we, we are required by university policy to house mostly the traditional aged freshmen and sophomore students. A new year at the University of San Francisco brings about a higher turnout of freshmen than the university has seen. As the problem settles down, we can expect a brighter future for upcoming students planning on moving in. Reporting for USF TV News, I am Patrice Hara. International Student Services held their annual CultureScape event on Friday, November 10th, showcasing diversity on the USF campus with food and entertainment. Roach Lozano reports. Good evening, and I'm Rochelle Lozano with USF TV News. Friday, November 10, is the day that kicked off the 2006 International Educational Week with the annual signature event known as CultureScape. 
Culturescape brought together many multicultural clubs on campus, as well as a diverse group of many spectators, to promote and celebrate the different fascinating cultures through music, performances, and of course, the food we all love at the McLaren Complex and the Presentation Theater. Culturescape was planned and hosted by USF's international and domestic students of the International Student Association. The primary focus of Culturescape was to showcase student clubs and organizations to educate the USF community about world cultures and promote cross-cultural understanding. Some performances of the night included a hip-hop demonstration by USF's hip-hop dance group Soul Step, Monaleo, a hula performance by Huio Hawaii, and a performance by the University Choir. Hi. So tonight, what type of cultural club did you perform for? Um, ISO, which is an Indian student organization. And um, what do you enjoy most about performing this type of dance? The energy. I love the energy we put into it. And it really pumps me up, so it's great. <laughs> and finally, how long have you been performing this type of dance? Um, I've actually been dancing since I was little, but I mean, I haven't done this kind of dance officially. So this is my first official like uh, Hindi team that I've been on. The food and exhibits were just as eclectic as the performances, from the Arab Student Union's falafel and hummus, egg rolls and bubble tea from Formosa, Taiwan, and vegetable samosa presented by the Indian Student Organization, just to name a few. What is your role in help planning this event? Well, I direct the International Student Services Office, and we advise the International Student Association, and the members of ISA are responsible for Culturescape. Okay. And what did you hope to accomplish or hope to accomplish for Culturescape? Well, Culturescape is really a community-wide celebration for all of our students and staff, administrators at USF, in order to celebrate the diversity that we have here. We are 14th in the nation uh, with respect to our diversity and we want to make sure that people are aware of the the full scope of that celebration with over 80 countries represented at USF. Culturescape was a fun-filled night that drew a large crowd in valuing the different cultures worldwide. With the huge variety of ethnic delicious foods, don't expect any leftovers. Once again, this is Rochelle Lozano signing out from the McLaren Complex and reporting for USF TV News 35. Here's what's happening in college campuses across the nation in our college report. Islamic leaders are calling for an FBI investigation after a UCLA student was repeatedly tasered Tuesday, November 14th in a university's library for failing to show ID. The 23-year-old Iranian-American, Mustafa Tabanabanajad, was asked to leave the library after failing to show his student ID during a routine safety check. Tabanabanajad maintains that he was not resisting attempts to leave the library. The incident was caught on camera phones by multiple students. Here's a clip of the incident, and we must warn you, the video may be disturbing to some. UCLA police officials issued a statement saying, quote, Tabata Banajad encouraged library patrons to join his resistance. A crowd gathering around the officers and Tabata Banajad's continued resistance made it urgent to remove Tabata Banajad from the area. The officers deemed it necessary to use the taser in a drive-stun capacity. Tabata Banajad has not made a public comment since the incident, and the Council on American Islamic Relations is calling for an FBI investigation into possible civil rights violations. A fraternity house fire at the Nebraska Wesleyan University killed one student and injured three others on Friday, November 17th. The fire started early in the morning at the Phi Kappa Tau house at the Lincoln, Nebraska school. At least 39 other people were in the house when the fire started, and the cause of the fire is under investigation. The house did not have a sprinkler system, though a fire alarm was activated. Two former Seton Hall University students pled guilty on Wednesday, November 15th to arson in a prank gone wrong. It was almost seven years ago when 26-year-old Joseph Lepore and Sean Ryan set fire to a banner in the floor's lounge, spreading smoke through the entire dormitory, ultimately killing three 18-year-old freshman girls. Both men will face up to five years in prison under a plea deal with prosecutors. And that's your college report.